IP Spoofing, How It Works, by Miranda Ibrahim. What is IP? IP stands for Internet Protocol. IP is used as an addressing system for all devices that connect to the Internet. An IP address is a 32-bit long address in the form of 8 bits separated by 3 periods. An example IP address is 192.183.222.1. What is IP spoofing? IP spoofing is the act of an imposter sending IP packets sourced from somebody else pretending to be a trusted source. The imposter does this by utilizing the source IP address area in the IPv4 datagram header. Why would anybody want to spoof IP? To gain unauthorized access to devices such as a server. To snoop on data traffic going through a sender and a receiver and to render services unavailable by denial of service attacks. To understand spoofed communication, we must understand normal communication first. In normal communication, we have both a sender and a receiver. The sender and the receiver use something called the TCP three-way handshake to establish communication. First, the sender sends a sync request to the receiver. The receiver responds with a sync acknowledge and the sender completes the connection process by acknowledging that last packet. Once it has been acknowledged, they have established communication. The first kind of spoofing I am going to talk about is non-blind IP spoofing. Non-blind IP spoofing means that there is an imposter on the same subnet as the victim. The sender will establish normal communication with the receiver by sending a sync packet. The receiver will respond with a sync acknowledge and while this is going on, the imposter will guess the sequence number of the communication and send its own sync packet using the IP address of the victim as their own on that last sync packet that will establish the communication between the receiver and the imposter. The next kind of IP spoofing I'd like to talk about is blind IP spoofing. Blind IP spoofing means that the imposter is no longer on the same subnet as the victim. They sit over the internet. So, as before, the victim sends their first sync packet to the receiver. The receiver responds with a sync acknowledge and guessing the sequence number again. The imposter uses the victim's IP address to send the last sync packet to the receiver and establish communication by getting the receiver to trust the default gateway of the imposter. To route information back to itself, the imposter must use a feature on the IPv4 datagram header called source routing. If implemented correctly, the imposter may be able to route the direct path the packet must take back to himself rather than the packets being sent back to the victim with the real IP address that the imposter is using as his own. There are two kinds of source routing, 
loose source routing and strict source routing. The next kind of attack I'd like to talk about today is the man in the middle attack. This is how an imposter would snoop on packet transfer over communication between a victim and a receiver. So yet again, we have the victim and the receiver, the connecting over the internet. Um, we have an imposter, he is sitting in the middle. He is going to try to get the receiver to send packets to him first on the way back to the victim. So what the imposter does is the attacker sends a gratuitous op packet to the receiver to access the gateway being shared by the sender and the receiver. With this address, the attacker is now able to intercept packet transfer while it's on its way back to the gateway. The imposter now will snoop on every packet that goes through its layer 2 address and forward them back to the default gateway so they can make their way back to the sender. Let's take a look at that packet transfer again. The imposter sits in the middle undetected by the victim and the receiver. The next kind of attack I'd like to talk about is the last TCP type attack, um, but the first denial of service attack that I will example for you. It is called the TCP sync flood attack. The sender and the receiver establish normal communication. The imposter will use the sender's address to send a TCP sync packet to the receiver. When the receiver responds, they send a sync acknowledge to the correct IP of the sender. However, because the sender never originated the packet to begin with, the sender's system drops the packet. The attacker does this thousands of times. And with each dropped packet from the receiver, there is a half open connection left between the victim and the receiver. If the imposter creates thousands of half open connections, the receiver will not be able to maintain normal connection because the receiver cannot handle any more TCP connections. The next kind of DOS denial of service attack I am going to talk about is a smurf attack. A smurf attack is destined for the layer 2 address of the victim. The attacker is going to use an ICMP packet this time rather than a TCP connection packet. ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. It is used for management such as verifying the existence of devices on a network. In a smurf attack, the attacker sends ICMP packets to the broadcast address of the receiver. We know that all addresses that are on that network are attached to the broadcast address, so they will all respond to this ICMP packet. Since the attacker definitely spoofed the victim's IP address on this ICMP packet, all of those IP addresses will respond to this ICMP packet and will respond to the device of the victim. All of those responses render a really nasty time for the victim. They are receiving packets on packets and their system can no longer handle connections anymore. In the last form of IP spoofing that I would like to talk about, it is another denial of service attack, but this one is destined for the receiver. 
This form of attack is called the ICMP Ping of Death. In this form of attack, the imposter again uses the ICMP packet as its method of destruction. The imposter sends an ICMP.